On this video in the Open Framework Super Basic series, we're looking at how we can take our drawings, manipulate the code, and output them as JPEGs so that we can save the awesome drawings that we're making. So we've been making all of this cool stuff, we're doing a lot of drawing, and uh, we see it there instantaneously. And it's really exciting watching systems generating stuff and working with generative systems and being able to make stuff that we see there and then that's produced out of code. But sometimes we want to save it. We want to record it, do something else with it, share it with people. And being able to save the outputs of the systems is a really useful and helpful thing. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how do we save screens out of open frameworks. In previous videos, we've built interactive dynamic stuff that draws for us, generative simple drawing systems. So in this example, I can draw a line, a set of curves, and I can run it out full screen and, and produce these amazing shapes based upon the systems that I've decided. And I can sit and tweak them to get what I like. And every so often there's one that I really, really like, and maybe I want to save it. And at the moment, we don't have any particularly practical way of doing it. But Open Frameworks has that built in. So in this uh, video, I'm going to go through that really, really simply and start talking about a simple structure called a switch statement that allows us to deal with multiple inputs rather than having to write really complex, convoluted code. So in my application, in the CPP file, I've got these setup and update and draw routine. And in my key pressed function, I'm using an if statement to say, if the key equals F, toggle the full screen to go full and back. And if the key equals D, draw me a new line. And what I want to do is I want to save the screen. So I can say, if the key is equal to, let's call it S, then I want to save whatever's on the screen. And Open Frameworks has a really simple command to do that, which is OF, save screen. And what it wants to be passed is the name of a file. And it usually saves out as a JPEG. So I can call this my polyline drawing dot dot jpeg so now when i press the s key it's going to save me out whatever's on the screen as pixels so as pixel data as jpeg and save it out to disk so let's see if we can run that and make it happen so run this full screen here's my amazing drawing when i press the s key that should have saved me a drawing. So let's go and have a look and see what we've got. If I flip to my desktop, in my apps sketches folder, <clears throat> I've got the sketch that I'm working on. And inside the bin folder is the binary. And you'll see inside the bin folder is a binary executable that gets compiled. And this is where the data folder would be. And if I have a look inside, in the data folder, there is my polyline drawing. And if I have a look at it, there's my drawing. Excellent. Saved out as a JPEG, which is great. So let's go and run this again, and let's save out a bunch of them. Because I might be going through. So let's go to my application, and we'll save out a bunch of pictures. So I like my drawing. I've made another one. I save that. Make another drawing, save that. Make another drawing, save that. But when I go to my data folder, it's only saving one drawing. Uh, but this is the most recent. The problem is as I'm using the same file name every time and overwriting the previous picture. So what I'd like to do is generate a unique file name for each one. And I could get into working out how do I make a system dialog. When I press a save, I can type a name in, but I'd like to do it automatically. We'll look at system dialogs and doing more complex, complicated stuff of accessing system later. 
But there is a really simple way to get around this problem. My polyline drawing.jpg is going to be the name every time, so if it overwrites it. So what could I use as a unique uh, element? I could just grab whatever the time is, and that will not always be perfect depending upon what the system clock is doing. But I could say, get the seconds, or I'll get the milliseconds since this application started running, and probably it'll be pretty unique most of the time. And there's a function. So I could get the system time and use that as part of the name for my file. And there's a function that allows me to go and get the milliseconds since this application started running, which is OF get elapsed milliseconds, or I can get the system time milliseconds. So if I say, OF get the system time milliseconds, it'll go off, find out what the clock is doing inside the computer and return the milliseconds. So that's the thousandths of a second, thousand milliseconds per second, and it'll give me this number back. So I could stick that in the name of my file, and every time I hit the S key, it'll make a unique name. So I'm going to say, get that, and then add line drawing on the end of it. And I can use the plus when I make a system name. The thing is, this is getting a number, and the system name wants a string, a piece of text. So I need to take this number that's coming back from the system clock and turn it into like a word, even though you kind of go, well, yeah, it's written down. The computer sees them as different things. So I need to force this into being a string or a piece of text. So I can say, OF, so I need to take this system time number and turn it into a string or a piece of text. So I can use the command OF to string, and it'll take pretty much any value. And I put the get milliseconds inside it. So it'll go off and find the milliseconds, give it to OF to string, and take whatever that thing is and turn it into a string that I can print out and use as text. So now it's going to make a number that's coming from the system clock, and then add line drawing.jpg on the end of it. And I'm just going to put a, an underscore there. So we should see this name concatenated and be unique every time. It'll glue those bits together and pass it to the OF save screen routine that'll use that as the file name. So let's see, compile that and see if it works. So I make a drawing, I hit the S key, hit the S key again, and once more for luck, and then let's see what we've got. And there we go, inside my data folder, inside the bin folder, here's my application, and you can see I've saved one drawing, and another, and another. So I can make these unique named objects by using the system clock and concatenating or gluing together another word that I like. So now, using this OF save screen, I can give it any name that I like, and by calling the system time milliseconds and converting that into a string, I can make a unique file name and export all these amazing pictures that I can take off and do whatever the hell I like with, which is really, really, really cool. There's only one more thing that I want to do, which is actually talk about what's going on here in this code. So we're saying when a key gets pressed, if the key is F, do this. If the key is D, do this. If the key is S, do this. And it's like if, 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 if. It's getting messy. And there's actually a much better thing that we can do here. Because every time we're saying, if the key is this, if the key is this, if the key is this, we could just say, find out what the key is. And then if it's this one, do that, or that, or that, or that. And that's called a switch statement. So it brings a thing in. And we say, here are all the different switches that this thing that we're asking for could control. So we could say, what temperature is it? And rather than going, if the temperature is this, if the temperature is this, if the temperature is this, we can actually set it up. So we use a switch statement that looks like this. So I'm going to add a couple of lines down here, and I'm going to say switch. And the switch statement starts with us saying, what's the expression? And we're going to say, we're asking it to evaluate the key. And key is a variable that's coming from 
you can see up here, when a key is pressed, this function is being passed an integer called key with the number of the key in it. And we can say if key, just like we've done here, if the case is that the key is an F, do this thing. So what we want it to do is, we'll cut this from here, if the key is an F, toggle the full screen, and then we use this expression break. I don't bother checking anything else. And it drops out of this loop and carries on with the rest of the program. So break is a, a statement that says stop doing what you're doing and go back to where you were. So this case, blah, 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 do a thing and doing it, we could copy and say, if the case is, let me tidy this up and get rid of that now. If the case is D, if case equals D, don't toggle full screen, but do all of this stuff here. So I'm going to paste that in. And again, at the end, break. So we don't need that if statement either. And the last thing is, if the key equals S, So if the case that the switch statement is evaluating is an S, then do our save to screen, grabbing the time and joining it up to the word line drawing. And then again, break. And the last thing that we have is usually we'd have a default to say, if it isn't any of the ones above, I could ask it to do a thing like, um, you know, any key apart from these does a particular thing. In this instance, we're telling it not to do anything. We're just saying break, and that's the end of it. So I can get rid of the if statements. So now we're using a switch statement, which is a little more complicated, but it's much more flexible. So I don't have to write if this, if this, if this all the time. So I can say, Switch. We're evaluating what key is. If it's F, do this. If it's D, do this. If it's S, do this. And if it's none of those, do this last bit, which is much neater. And it's much easier to read. So that's how to use a switch statement to control in this instance, lots of different keys. So we could write one switch statement saying evaluate the key. And every time we want to add a thing, we don't need to write more ifs that get complicated and all over the place. We can use switch, which is much neater. And using OF save to screen, we can save out by grabbing milliseconds and make unique file names for all of our awesome drawings. So that's that for this version of Open Framework Super Basics. If you're interested, please hit the subscribe, leave some comments below, leave some questions. We're going to be doing loads more generative drawing, looking at sound, audio 3D, and I'll see you on the next video.